Hi, welcome. This is Wired Up with Mark. Uh, I work for Audulous, and what we're going to do today is just to kind of freeform build a patch. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to start with a clock. I'm going to open up uh, Audulous and go here to the module browser. I'm going to go to clock, and I'm going to have a clock there. And I know I'm going to need subdivisions, so I'm going to add a clock divider too as well. And I'm going to stick those two together. I like to keep everything on a grid, so I just hit command. Uh, quote there and turned on the grid and have them nice and spaced like this. I'm going to always, you know, you always want to link up the sink and the gate together on the module here. And uh, let's start, let's do a slower patch today. We'll go down to 108. And the fastest subdivision I'll need is the 16th note. So I turned that up to 16. And <clears throat> we have these outputs, the one divided by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll keep it like that for now, but you can see with this control, we can change the different types of subdivisions we get out uh, of the clock divider. <clears throat> for now, we'll keep it like this and just see uh, what we come up with. Uh, okay, so next we're going to look for a sequencer. I like using this random sequencer that has a little bit of randomness added to it. So add up the, whoops, no, let's go here first. Just set it up on the 16th note pulse. Now, the way this sequencer works is that every time the step um, is chosen, this is a percent chance that that step will change. So this is a 100% chance. Every time that that uh, is coming back around to that first step, it's changing to a new value. But since these are all set to zero, these values aren't changing. So let's kind of do this. I'll just what we're getting here is we're going to get a, a sequence that will change, but change slowly, and not all of the steps will change equally. Okay, and we're going to need, of course, a modulation to octave converter here. Set that here, connect that, and what next? We're going to need. I'm going to use a complex VCO. Oh, of course, a quantizer. And we're going to use a slew limiter and a. I think that's it for a second. Okay. So I'm going to take the quantizer, put that here. Oops. Slew limiter. You always want to put the slew limiter after the quantizer because if you put it before the quantizer, then you know, you won't hear the glides in between the notes. You have to quantize it first, then uh, slew limit it. So, okay, that. Um, okay. I like the complex VCO because you can, well, it's complex. You can come up with more interesting uh, tones because basically what you have here is you have two oscillators in one package. They look, uh, they're, they're pretty much identical to the VCO, as you see here. Right, and I mean pretty much identical because you go inside of the module, and here they are. They're right here, you know, and they're exploded out a little bit, so they have their access to these controls that uh, aren't exactly the same. And you can see if I go to here, uh, I, I'm able to expose that whole module to the front end of that panel, and then situate them here, and then have these controls uh, in between. So, uh, whoops. So what we have here is this oscillator that mod this one modulates this one. And these are just hardwired controls in here. We have linear FM, you have exponential FM here, uh, phase modulation, uh, amplitude modulation, and a mix control that balances between uh, one or the other oscillator here. So uh, we'll back out here a little bit. Um, what next? What next should I do? Let's add an effect, so we'll do... Oh wait, no, of course, ah, envelopes. Yeah, we need that. I like this one, because it has two of them in a package together in one envelope uh, module. You can see what, what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm zooming in so that, it, you see how the, it might be a little faint on your screen, but there are these little lines here that are the grid, so you can see how it's snapping to the grid there. Uh, I, I want it to have just this little bit of space in between, so I'm just moving it a little bit until that appears, and I can then put it there. So we're going to take 
Ah, I know. I, I want to add a little chance, so we do the Bernoulli gate. Bernoulli gate. Oh, let's let's do this a little. Yeah, let's use a little one because I don't need the X Y. I just need the A B. Um, over here. Oh no 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 no. I do. I do need that. Okay. Wait. I do need that. I do this one. So I'm gonna put this over here. Select all of these modules at once and just kind of move them over. Ooh, but see, if we have the grid on and I'm not at the level that it's uh, snapped to, then it will kind of move them around like this. So we just do Command Z, zoom in, and then now they can smoothly go across the screen like that. Okay, so lined up. And what I want to do here is I'm going to select between the fastest note and let's say this th divide by three, right? And I want to do that every six, okay. Just for starters, we'll see how this works. So I'm gonna have it just go to one output all the time. And I'm gonna use this gate that's coming out of here, this Bernoulli gate, to drive uh, whoops, this envelope, okay. So we have that, we're gonna go to uh, <clears throat> filter and what filter should I have here? I like this SEM one. Okay. There you go. You might see that some of the modules are they're they're not quite the same size. This is made by a, a, a user forum user uh, Jerry Smith uh, Jer SMI on the Discord, <clears throat> and they just have a little bit of a different look to them, but they they work the same in, in a lot of ways. So I'm going to take the audio out here to here, and. Okay, put these all the way up. These are like, these attenuate the modulation coming in, but I have these attenuators here, so I will do that with this. And, okay, I'll increase the time there a little bit. Um, pull that down a little bit. Now, VCA, right here. Oops. Okay. And this, uh, this filter is the, it's kind of based on the architecture of the Oberheim SEM filter uh, internally. Don't ask me about filters, that's, that's one of my weaknesses. I really don't know how to design them or how to even read a white paper about them and translate them into Audulous, but, uh, you know, it's <laughs> there's a lot going on here and it's a lot of uh, uh, higher math um, involved. Okay, so we need VS, VCA, now we're going to have a delay effect, and I'm always going to be using this two poly knobs here, and okay, we'll put that through the delay, I'm going to stereoize this, I kind of like just turning it down to indicate that I'm taking it over with these two, okay, I do it where they're kind of close to each other like this, but then Pull down a bit. Okay, so I'll probably add more voices to this, but we'll do this to start. I'll put audio up. Okay, I always, I always do this just, just so you don't blast your ears. You turn this volume down first before you connect something, especially if it's already got sound going, so you can kind of turn it up and you know make sure you don't. patch going here. Uh, all right. Let's do a different scale here first. These are all, um, I'll probably fix this, not fix it, I'm going to change it in a uh, future update where these are the church modes and they have all these like Greek sounding names. Um, and you have your um, major scale and Aeolian is minor. Uh, music theory is not my, my big uh, uh, strong point. But obviously some, some users have already at the beginning like said, okay, where's major and minor and all this? It's, it's here, you just have to know that that's what it's called. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it into, I like Mixolydian just because it's kind of a cool word, <laughs> I don't know. And 
cut that a little bit. The difference, so the slew limiter, the difference between linear and exponential is that in linear, you're always gonna have the same amount of time uh, gliding between the notes, whereas exponential, the further the notes are away, um, the more glide you're gonna hear. And that's that's kind of a more natural uh, way to to think about it, because if you're, you're kind of sliding up on a guitar, um, uh, neck or something or bending a note the the closer you are to the bend the faster that bend's going to happen but if you bend a, a long time it takes longer to get up to that pitch so It's a little too high in pitch. I, I, I like to kind of start with something that's a little uh, lower in pitch. So there are two ways to do this. We, I, can, I can either change the octaves here on the VCO, or I can just get right here on this module. And
after this, I'm gonna pull this down here to adjust the stereo width. You weren't even hearing the stereo before because I had it wired incorrectly. I'm gonna squish that up. Okay. What I'm doing, what I'm doing, you can't hear it. Uh, you can't see it on the. When I'm pressing options. It allows me to pan around, so I don't have to zoom in and out all the time uh, to reposition myself. Okay. Okay. This is the stereo, as so you can see. It's very wide right now. It's, one delay is here, one delay is here, and as I decrease it, it kind of brings the stereo uh, image closer together. So you can do it all mono. So I just like to mix just a little bit to make a little more cohesive sound. Okay, now, what I want to get a kind of syncopated sound out of this.
modulation really kind of affects the, the pitch of the um, oscillator. So if you look just a little bit, you can't really tell the change of pitch that much. It starts to, at the edges, kind of change the sound. But as you increase it, you hear a lot more of the going sharp. Okay. Now phase modulation is interesting because what it's doing is it's going to shift the phase of the wave from starting, kind of pushing it backwards and forwards.
this over here, I'm going to take one of these, let's say, from the, from the envelope on this side, and I'm going to use this to modulate one of these parameters.
to sort of mix this stuff together. So, so. So you can, it, it counts how many signals, it, it basically divides the outgoing signal by the amount that these knobs are turned up. So we don't have anything at 3 and 4, but we will have something at 1 and 2, so those are both turned up. But if I turn down this knob, you'll see it turns up input 1. And it's a quick way to keep something balanced without needing to adjust the overall output. here to trigger this. Okay. Maybe this may be 16. Okay. Okay. I'm add a little randomness to this where it kind of goes, might, might go backwards a step or something.
just changes the type of FM here.
back releases, and they will hold the filter high. Uh, so, let's go. It's a more improvisational thing that I've been doing with the tutorials where it's kind of following a sort of a loose script where this is sort of I'm just exploring. You know, all, all of the, the example patches that you see that came with Audulus, it starts this way where I just kind of, uh, I start with an idea, okay, I want to use a random sequencer and then have a kind of little doo -doo 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 line on the top and a drone bass line on the bottom and then start from that point and start moving these uh, controls around until you come up with something. You know, in the future, we'll talk about how you can kind of, um, you can have this as sort of a scene and then move between two different scenes that will allow you to so you kind of crossfade between different sets of sequencers that allow you to really compose a full song and you'll be able to, you know, you bring up um, one of the lines and then, you know, uh, decrease the volume of the other and then really kind of compose a whole tune. It's not just, okay, you know, this, this just by itself, you just hear it and it's just doing its thing, do, 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 do. you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't go anywhere, although it's also at the same time kind of hypnotic to listen to, you can just sort of relax, have it in the background, it's always kind of engaging, but always different, uh, but there are ways to do more compositional things that have a sort of beginning, middle, and end, uh, like more structural songs that uh, aren't just sort of a, uh, you know, runaway patch like this. Also, I mean, one of the things I like about Angelus is I'm not really good at playing piano at all. Like, I, I it, it take, it, if you have me sit down here, it'd be embarrassing. Like when I'm plucking out things, don't know scales, don't know anything. That's why I love uh, 
modulus, I love sequencers, quantizers, uh, you know, you just kind of move things around until it sounds cool. Uh, so obviously in the future I'll, I'll, I, I want to make some more patches where I'm showing you how to do stuff that uh, you know you can play with on, the, on the, the keyboard but any of this stuff you you could just substitute out the sequencer and the divider and all this clock stuff and just stick the MIDI input directly into the VCO and then you just have this side of the, uh, the synthesizer uh, to play with. Uh, so all, all of those things still apply for synth sound that you want to play or you want to sequence in something like a DAW or something instead of having the sequencer in Audulous you have it in, in Ableton or whatever uh, and you pipe the MIDI in. Uh, the same idea applies where you can use these synthesizer techniques that I'm showing you here uh, for those kind of patches. So, Alright, I think I'll leave it there today. Uh, you know, If you have any questions or you have any requests, uh, things you'd like me to, to see me do and to work out in a longer form uh, format like this. Uh, in the future, just uh, drop a comment below. Um, I will. The, there's a library. I, I live in this this island in, in Croatia called Korčula, and the library is moving right now. So they they have a new place that they're moving into, and when that new place is open, I'll be able to go there and stream live from there because their internet is better there, and that way we can do a kind of um, an interactive thing ask questions as I'm patching. There, there are some older uh, live streams that you can see from back when I was living in America that uh, where I had good internet that you um, and I could interact together, you ask questions, and we go for, for a long time uh, uh, doing stuff. But right now, just sort of putting it out there, this is something that I made. Um, you know, I hope, I hope it was useful uh, in some way and you enjoyed it, and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.